Let's see what this joint is. All right. Uh, let's see what this joint is hitting for. I knew this was coming, and you know it was coming. Let's do it. New Assassin's Creed, Creed, Creed. Yeah, Yasuke was a real dude. Who are you? Who do you serve? All I have ever known in my life. All she knew. I will end. Our customs. My family burns in the name of what the world be waiting for. I have a sneaky suspicion because there's going to be a samurai. Well, not. It's most likely going to play like that. There's going to be a samurai and a shinobi. She's probably going to be like obviously faster and more stealth based missions. And then Sa Ra Sasuke, uh, Yusuke is probably going to be more brute force like combat. It's going to be like a mix of the new and old. If I had to guess, I'm just curious to know, will you be able to switch between the two characters whenever you feel like it? Or will certain characters be locked behind certain missions? But that's a new original character. You are still a frog in a well who knows nothing of the sea. I'm an aim with new ships, but they all come from the same river. Please, no naval combat. <laughs> Please, no. Shout out to Ubisoft. Um, not giving Yasuke the uh the killmonger. That'd be crazy. The first samurai with a killmonger, but shout out to them giving him an actual realistic hairstyle. DEI samurai. The fits look clean. Vengeance. The fit is clean. I seen I seen speaking of the logs because I see I see you talking about it in the chat. I seen someone one of the funniest takes I seen on Twitter was somebody was like, "Why did they give?" First of all, locks have been around since forever, but somebody was like, "It's stupid they gave Yasuke locks because they was like, what barber even did that for him?" And I'm like, "Yeah, a, a black person like it'd be like the little things." I'm telling you, there's people on the internet that I feel like they try to pretend like they're people of color to be agents of chaos, but it's like the little things that they tweet that like gives it away that it's not a black person because no black person would ever tweet what barber did he go to to get his locks nigga you go to a loctician you don't go to a barber you don't get a <laughs> go to a barber to get a fucking haircut why would you go to a barber to get your hair twisted nigga get the fuck out of here <laughs> and you yeah and then you got free form too like you don't even have to go to a loctician Or choose another path beyond what we see. And we must. You know, you know what's funny too? In the midst of all this drama, I'm I'm more genuinely surprised they're upset. This is how you know motherfuckers are racist. And and Watts kind of commented on this. I'm more surprised people are upset there's gonna be a black samurai, which is historically accurate, versus I, I versus there's there's a woman in the game. <laughs> like niggas, like they they said, oh, do we have to hate women or black people? I have to figure out which one. Do I hate more this time? I hate niggas more. That's what I, that's what I hate more. Cause I don't know. Is this historically accurate? I don't know. I'm ignorant on this. Were there female Shinobi? I don't know. Maybe y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know the history on that. Were there? <laughs> Cause my gut tells me no, but it could be a yes. I see some no's and some yeses in the chat. Motherfucker, well, let's 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 ask Google. Let's ask Google. Uh, where were their female ninja? Uh, well, I'm sure they were known as Kunuchi, a term that evolved as means female ninja in the modern day. Okay, there were, there were. Okay, that's the word for it. Okay, I stand corrected. I stand corrected. They were. 
Hey, but you see, hey, you see how you see how easy it is. I didn't know, right? You see how easy it is to just hop on Google and just Google shit instead of hopping on Twitter and being like, "Oh, what barber gave this nigga locks?" A oh, barber didn't give him locks at all. <laughs> even still, even if this is historically accurate, these niggas still these internet niggas still had to pick to decide today: Do I hate women more or niggas? I hate niggas. Look for it together. We, must we pass a note. Do you like me? Yes or no? Rebuild. I like his character design. And follow the blade. Yarn. I don't know how I felt about this music choice. I mean, it's not rap music, and as you know, if it's not rap music in the trailer, that means that's a good sign they're confident. But I also don't know if I like this song choice. <laughs> Pulling up with that ooh -wop. So where's the gameplay at? I mean, they tweeted like three days ago. They're dropping a cinematic trailer and they always do this first. Who do you sub? We are the shadows. That served the light. Right, 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 right. November 15th is the release date. It is the, re oh, they dropped another video. I didn't even peep this. I didn't know this one dropped. Um, it's cool we know it's finally coming, but still no gameplay. So I'm not gonna get super excited. I gotta see some gameplay first. Let's learn about these characters. I haven't seen this video. With our dual protagonist, we have two fantasies, the samurai and the shinobi. We want the player to experience yes, both, and and we cannot squeeze both fantasies into one character because uh, samurai and shinobi came from a different uh, social class. They have different lives, so we cannot really uh, mix uh, them together. The historical character of Yasuke presented a really exciting opportunity for the narrative team. We approached it in the same way that uh, so much of the work is done in Assassin's Creed, which is really in terms of research. A lot of people were mad about Yasuke, and I, but like I seen like a really good point about how, like, if they just made it um, another Japanese man, people would just call it a a Ghost of Tsushima knockoff, which is in it's not fair in itself, but it's I agree with that. The fact that they chose to go with Yasuke as well as this other chick, I think it helps stand it helps the game stand out more from like a marketing standpoint. Like it's not all just about which the historical accuracy. I'm not gonna lie. This this whole debate from the fucking crybaby side of the internet about the historical inaccuracy of Yasuke is funny to me and it inspired a new video, man. There's an anime called Yasuke on Netflix. It's fire. You don't watch a lot of anime. That shit is ass. I, I, I watched it. That shit is ass. I'm happy he's in the game, but that anime is ass. Um, but it inspired it inspired a video for me. So that'll probably come out next week. Next week. Search in history first. Not a lot is known about him, but what we did know or we do know is that he arrived in Japan in 1579, right when our game starts and that he had relationships with some of the most interesting people in our setting, like Nobunaga, the Portuguese and Jesuits. How people complain about the historical inaccuracy of a franchise great. when the mentor literally summoned clones with a, with a golden apple. Yeah, we're going to talk about it in my video. I don't want to give the idea away, but I was cracking up, like writing down my ideas. Uh, they, like from like a marketing standpoint, it makes complete sense that they went with him. It helps the game stand out because I mean, they could have went with either Nobunaga or Yasuke. Like, those are the only two samurai I actually know from, like, history. <laughs> sort of tantalizing and enticing from a narrative perspective to come in and, and start weaving... They shot the gold, though, with the story sub. ...in between. The more we read about the character, 
the more he was inspiring for us. He's a foreigner discovering Japan and we, we thought it's the perfect fit because he's discovering Japan and you are discovering Japan also. And on the flip side, we have Nawe who comes uh, from the province of Iga, which is a, a remote uh, mountainous area, fiercely independent, uh, known as the birthplace of Shinobi. <laughs> with the black samurai, and I get a minute with the white one and Neo. That really well, their argument, the counter argument I've seen to the white samurai and Neo too is because that was a real person as well. But my thing is like, just like this game is probably going to take liberties with the character Yasuke, Neo took like, Whatever that samurai is, that character is based off of Neo too. That nigga wasn't fighting demons in real life and shit. But they didn't care about the historical inaccuracy of that shit. Also, there's a movie called that came out when I was a kid. There's a movie called The Last Samurai, starring Tom Cruise. There's a certain demographic that just loves that movie. We didn't, we didn't have a problem with that one either. <laughs> we expose a lot of different sides. Uh, in fact, the Last Samurai, when starring Oda Tom Cruise, completely destroy Iga. You have Yasuke and Oda that coming to destroy the Shinobi, so it can kind of They know Carnage. They just don't like Yasuke in a, in a position of power. They the argument is he's a retainer or some shit. I don't know. They they just like to see niggas with swords. This. This interesting tension. Between like imagine, uh, look at it from their perspective. Imagine not being a fan of black people and you know Ubisoft games are like a hundred plus hours. Now you have to deal with a black person for a hundred hours. Oh, that's a nightmare for them. To character. <laughs> we were able to connect her to uh, the province of Iga in the legendary Egan Shinobi. Episode. Yeah, it's the funny part is I don't even really, I haven't seen any Asian people complaining. It's the, it's a certain demographic. Fujibayashi Nagato, oh, who's, who's her father in the game. So we understand why she is, has the skills that she has and the values that she learns from her father in the people of Iga, which are valor, benevolence, and, and wisdom. He said, I have TBH. I've seen a couple in my comments, but like both of them were like super respectful. Like one said that like, it's a little disappointing not to see an Asian character because I think it's um, Pacific, Pacific Islander month or something like that. It's uh, it's some Asian um, history month, something like that. Excuse my ignorance. But, uh, but he wasn't nasty about it. And I was like, okay, I was like, I understand where that comes from. But then my counter argument to that is there is an Asian character in there. So is your argument... Because he was talking about representation. Is your argument representation or you wanted to see an Asian man specifically? Because there is an Asian woman in here. Uh, but like, I didn't see nothing nasty. Uh, like I said, the nasty stuff is only coming from a certain demographic I've seen. And we get to see now we acquire even more of that wisdom as the story unfolds. And if you ask anybody, it's super clear that samurai will be combat heavy. No, Ronan, no. And the will be stealth heavy. It creates this distinction right away. Yasuke uh, can fight with all his advantage, uh, his stature, like he's, he's a big guy, he can break door, he can fight multiple So he is the brute. He can break armor. Compared to Naoi, like her character and their, their outfit, it's, it's really about being stale, being unseen. She's the only one with the hidden blade, so they have clear advantage that put them into the, the... Oh, he just gave a detail away. He said that she's the only one with the hidden blade, so Yasuke never becomes... <clears throat> Yas Yasuke never becomes an assassin. He's basically her muscle. Tell them to come back, even if they can do uh, a bit of both. Uh... Which means she's the main character. <laughs> I, I guarantee you most people didn't watch this video though. The main character is Asian then. Really great pair together because on one side uh, we have Nawe, who's very intense and passionate. The black man's the brute. I know, right? Determined woman. What the fuck? Doc, what would Dr. Umar say? On her goals. She's kind of got her heart on her sleeve, and she'll say what she feels in the heat of the moment. And this intensity uh, that she brings as a shinobi, but that she also brings to her relationship. And this balances very well with Yasuke, who is sort of a, a thoughtful, level head to What Nawe. style you think they're doing? They've been confirmed this will be more in the style of the, the last three games. Hopefully not like Valhalla, though. It's made by the same team that made Odyssey. It's fiery passion. We really thought about somebody like Yasuke, historically, who was able to come to Japan and have the life that he did there to enter service for Oda Nobunaga and achieve all of the things that he did. Like, what kind of person would go through all of this? So our Yasuke is very uh, intelligent, thoughtful, and respectful of this culture that he encounters. And that makes him a very nice sort of counterpart to Nawe. 
He's a bit mysterious as well, and that's something we get to see unfold as the game progresses. You know there's gonna be a million armors in this game. <clears throat> Very interesting. Where's the gameplay reveal? They should have, at the end of the trailer, they should have said gameplay reveal coming in three weeks or something. Um, no, shout out to DJ Carr with the sub. They should have, like, we need a gameplay reveal. I'm interested. I like the tone, but, like, we ain't seen no fucking gameplay until I see some gameplay. And I hope the the, the gameplay styles are completely different. Um, but a bit, 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 probably at the Summer Games Fest. Mm, okay. Bet, bet, bet. Ronan, please stop. I already asked you to stop. Uh, I already have gameplay details. Uh, I've been scouring the internet trying to find whatever I can. Um, you're going to drop a best build day one? Yeah, I'm dropping a best build. Fucking best Shinobi build, best Yasuke build. And I'm black, so is Yasuke, so trust me. You know what's going to be funny? The same people who are hating, the, the people who are nitpicking everything, Stellar Blade, and now the same people are nitpicking everything with this game. It's no pleasing them. Um, I, I just pray the game is actually good. Because that's how you're going to shut people up. If the game is good, people are going to play it. Um, but if the game is bad, oh my god, Ubisoft. If the game is bad, you already know that side of the internet's going to be like, see, that fucking black ruined the game with his DEI and shit. Not because the game is bad, but for the for the sake of... I'm, I'm really rooting for Ubisoft on this one. I don't want to fucking hear it, bro. The blacks are ruining all our fucking games. I don't want to hear that shit. Um... All right, so we got some details from Okami. Da, 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 da. He said, and I have dual protagonist. Uh, let me turn my music back on. Uh, become Noi. No Is that how you say her name? A Shinobi assassin and Yasuke. Yeah, we you know Samurai. Uh, she'll be using stealth to avoid detection and agility. Uh, as Yasuke, strike your foes with lethal precision and power. Unlock new skills, gear, and progression independently of each character. Oh my god. This game is going to be a fucking grind fest. I got to grind two characters. Is set in feudal Japan. Build your own network of spies to be your eyes and ears across the locations to hunt down your next target. Ooh. That's one thing I do miss about the old Assassin's Creed games. It was in, I believe, either 2 or Brotherhood it was first um, added, where you could actually have people from the Brotherhood swoop down and help you with an assassination. Like, bring the Brotherhood aspect back to the game, and I hope that's what that is. And, like, they, I hope they build upon that if they do, too. Um, create a fully customizable hideout for your growing Shinobi League. I don't really care about playing house. Uh, one question, what's brand, what's the brand walking pad you use you recently got? I don't know. Uh, I'd have to check my purchasing history. I got it off the TikTok shop because it was on sale for like half off. Uh, dun, 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 dun. It'd be cool if they implemented the instant, instant switch mechanic like GTA. <laughs> Oops. Let's see. How do I see my purchase history? Your orders. Do, 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 do. View all. Uh, the name of the brand is the Deer Run Q1. Deer Run, one word, Q1. Deer Run Q, Q1. TikTok shop is actually legit. Yeah, that's where I got my walking pad. I paid 138 bucks for it. It was it normally went for 270, but it was on sale, so I got it, I got it off the TikTok shop. Um did it, did it, did it, did it. all right, what other stuff I got? What up, Rob? Assassin's Creed Shadows will run on an updated version of Ubisoft's Anvil engine, so we're not running on a new engine, which means this will look similar to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, just a little bit better, probably. Uh new global illumination system dynamically affects enemy vision and improves lighting. Hide in shadowy areas or even create your own shadows by snuffing out the lights. I like that. Okay. Real. Okay. Get a little, that's Splinter Cell right there. It's going to be a real stealth game, hopefully. Dynamic weather system. Severe weather can affect enemy vision and hearing. I can't control it. What does it matter? Um, <laughs> Ubisoft AI won't change. I know, right? Nearly every prop in the game can be broken and dynamically reacting to your actions. That's a bold claim. I need to see that in action. That's a bold claim. Um, seasons will change throughout the game. Hide in the tall grass in the spring and summer and cross frozen lakes in winter and autumn. Translation, there's a lot of content in this game. So much content that the seasons will change because you will be grinding two different characters. Jesus Christ. Um, what else we got? Got some screenshots. 
Yeah, I want to hear about the AI. This looks pretty good. This looks pretty good. Do, 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 do. Different dev from Mirage. It's the people who made Odyssey. I don't know who made Mirage, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't the team who made Odyssey. Uh, yeah, we got some screenshots right there. Like I said, I've been collecting all the info. Anything on free running or is it abandoned? I don't know. Assassin's Creed Shadows will have a season system. Yeah, we know each season will have a direct consequences on the world and its gameplay. The open world progresses through spring, summer, autumn, and winter with each new period bringing its own weather conditions and terrain shifts. In summer, you can use the new prone stance to crawl into a pond and hide beneath the surface of the water. But in the winter, that pond will be frozen. How fast do the, do the seasons change? That's what I want to know. Um, cause locking a prone behind a specific season, that's kind of weird. You can't prone on ice. Like just make them slide <laughs> as spring blooms, gra uh, grass grows tall enough to hide in bushes become leafy, perfect to crouch behind. But as the months go by, the approaching winter kills off these natural hiding spots. I feel like this is an exaggeration. Uh, do they mean if it's winter IRL, it turns winter in the game? I'd imagine not. You have to keep in mind, Ronan. Uh, there are different seasons based on the hemisphere that you are in, right? So, like, if it's summer here, it doesn't mean it's summer, like, in Australia or whatever. Like, that's not how... I don't think that... It's just an in-game thing, dog. Uh, I mean, I could be wrong, but I would have a hard time believing that. Like, there's there's things called hemispheres. Uh, hanging icicles threaten to snap and fall. Uh, yeah, I would imagine that, like, the, the seasons are set to chapters, like the story. Revealing your rooftop position. But at the same time, the worsening weather limits the view for the enemies. Howling winds obscure your footsteps. And guard patrols stick to the area of warmth, allowing you to take new colder paths. Can you slip? That's the crazy part. <laughs> Can you fucking slip? Seeing is believing. I need to see this in action. Uh, what else info I got? Something about a grappling hook, too. There's a lot of different articles, like, all over the place. Uh, the game's two protagonists have some clear advantages. Yeah, we know, uh, Yasuke would be great at fighting while the Shinobi is better at stealth and parkour. We developed quite a bit of new tools for the stealth and one of them is a grappling hook. The creative director explains in a breakdown of the new cinematic trailer and the grappling hook allows you to climb over the walls. You cannot climb with Yasuke or without the hook. They said your big black hulking ass can't climb no wall. That's crazy. Hey, if she can swim and he can't, that'd be crazy. Cause didn't this nigga wash ashore? That's how they found him in Japan. Like they just randomly. That's why there's so much like from what I read, there's so much mystery behind who he is. Cause he just like randomly washed ashore. So he should know how to swim because he survived. Uh nah, he was a slave. I read he washed ashore. Now y'all saying he was a slave. I either, either way, because I was gonna I was gonna allude to that, right? Even if Let's say he was a, let's say he wasn't a slave and the story is they just found him on a beach like he washed ashore. I'd argue he probably still was a slave because like the slave trade was going on. So like he could have been somebody who like jumped off board and then found himself in like in Japan or some shit. But like either or I think he probably was a slave and that got away somehow. Um <laughs> their first D1 athlete. <laughs> All right, bro. Uh the notion that one character eh, who cares. It's all physics based, so there's a little bit of improbability sometimes when using it. There's a danger to using it, but you could also perform assassinations from it. I wonder if all the people complaining about the historical inaccuracies care about when Evie Fry went invisible. You guys remember that? You guys remember that? Because it's funny too, because I believe Assassin's Creed Syndicate takes place around the same time as this game, like in the 1800s. Like the turn of the century? Yeah, in, in Assassin's Creed Syndicate, Evie Fry could go full blown invisible. Not like a little like a, it was the game was so fucking easy with her. They didn't play that game. There was some shit in there that like <laughs> uh, Yeah, they don't play no fucking games. What they do what they talk about in the chat. Uh, okay. What else I got? Uh, map size, map size, map size. Chill, chill. Was a glitch in the animus? Oh, okay. <laughs> no, that was the start of the Industrial Revolution. You got your timelines mixed up. I thought this took place. Um, 
towards the end of the samurai era, which would be like in the late 1800s around the Industrial Revolution. I'm not saying they took place at the same exact time, but I was like, I, I, I would think they're around similar times. I think the game's in the 1500s. Okay, see, that's my fault. I was thinking it was in the 1800s, my fault. Okay, then yeah, then the timelines aren't mixing. I was like, that's, that'd be crazy. Um, it's been confirmed by Ubisoft that the map of Japan for Assassin's Creed Shadows is around the same size as the Egyptian map featured in 2017's Assassin's Creed Origins. They said 1579, but ladies and gentlemen, and you got two characters. They said the 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 stuff you unlock is separate, so be prepared to grind because Origins was a big game. Uh, the latter title was the first supersized Assassin's Creed game, bringing about a change in formula that stripped away what previously existed and replaced it with an open world RPG style of gameplay. In a recent interview with IGN, it was claimed that the AC Shadows won't be as large as Valhalla or Odyssey, but it's on par with Assassin's Creed uh, uh, Origins. What the fuck does that mean to me? These niggas be lying, bro. You remember when they said Valhalla would be smaller than Odyssey because people were complaining? And that was always one thing, like, I liked Odyssey, but, like, I was 100% with people who felt like the game was too long and bloated. So then, remember when Valhalla was coming out, like, 2020, they said they made the game smaller? It was bigger than Odyssey. They made the map smaller, but then there was five maps. And then what they did is the maps have been smaller, but there were more, and then the maps were more dense. There was more shit all over the fucking screen. And it was buggy last year's who cares about mirage um it seems like ubisoft is pivoting entirely on the short form content and returning instantly to the broader more epic maps that would have come to know partially love from the assassin's creed series it's in line with the latest assassin's creeds that we've done on a scale level maybe we can compare it a little bit more to the size of assassin's creed origins we did want to have a much closer to real life scale ratio so because castles took a lot of space and we really wanted the mountains to feel like mountains we've made the environments feel wider in the game but I would say around the same side as Origins. I love the Mirage Slander. That game sucks. People who like that game are crazy to me. That game sucks. The fattest assassin is Bassem. Uh, Assassin's Creed Origins still feels massive to play. Yeah, we know. Da -da 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 -da. They ain't talking about nothing. So yeah, we got a little bit on the map size. Be mentally prepare yourself. It will be a large game. I never finished it. I like forced myself to finish it just because it was short. Uh, what else I got for you? Okay, like literally, I got all the info, baby. Um, we got info on the pricing. So for seventy, you get the base game and a pre-order bonus, probably a costume or something. They got a hundred and ten dollar version, which comes with the base game, pre-order bonus, season pass, three days early access, the ultimate edition for hundred and thirty, base game, pre-order bonus, season pass, three days early access, and the ultimate pack. I don't know what the fuck that is. I'm gonna imagine that's some extra skins. Or you can do Ubisoft Plus, which is 18 bucks a month, and you'll get everything in the Ultimate Edition. Honestly, 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 you, this might be the best deal. This might be the best deal. Buy the game for $18, run through it in a month. <laughs> uh, run through it in a month or two, maybe two. It might take you a little bit longer, but run through it in a month or two and then turn it off. Cause you can turn this off whenever you want. If you don't care about owning it, this might be the best deal right here. Uh, hold up, that's not bad. Yeah, that that's where these subscriptions, if you don't care about owning games, I think this is where subscription services do come in handy. Just pay 18 bucks, beat it within a month, turn the service off. Uh, they got a cancellation fee, don't they? Not that I know of. Um, honestly, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck this is. I'll probably get the gold edition so I can get the three days early access. I'll probably buy a hard copy of the gold edition. If if if, if I'm gonna spend 130, I need to know what's in that ultimate pack. I, I don't. There's no cancellation fee. Yeah, I would recommend y'all go with this then. If you can, if you're good at games, if you're good at games, and you feel like you can beat it in a month, you just want to run through the story. I would say just get the Ubisoft Plus subscription. Star Wars Shadows is releasing around the same time, so I'm a sub. Oh, Outlaws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You could do that for Outlaws too uh you're not getting it for free nah ubisoft don't fuck with me no more it's cool it's a tax write-off it's cool um yeah if you want me to chuck up that 130 they gonna need to tell me what's in that shit so now y'all aware of the pricing it's becoming a thing uh i I'm, I'm not mad at the 110 dollar edition just because you get three days early access and the season pass and it's been confirmed i believe there will be at least two expansions so to me that's kind of worth the money if you care about the game just this one it's always the 130 dollar edition i'm like what justifies paying for this 
Uh, it's on GameStop for the items. For the items, really? Let's see. GameStop, Assassin's Creed, Shadows. This is what they really should be complaining about. Do, do, do. How do I see the, the bonus editions? Uh, this fucking site sucks, man. Platform. Am I bugging? Where do I? I don't know how to look at it. Go to GameStop. Where the big boy editions at? Man, fuck this goofy ass site. Whatever, dude. I, 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 if somebody got the link, I'd appreciate it. Who keeping GameStop in business? Nigga, not me. Uh, and search Assassin's Creed Collector's Edition. Oh, this is it. Collector's Edition, 280 bucks for PS5. So you get the game and then three days early access. This is not the Ultimate Edition. This is the Collector's Edition. This is 300 bucks. I mean, if you care about toys, I guess. I don't care about this shit. Pre-order to get a bonus quest. Oh, my God. <laughs> you get a Shiba, a pre-order Shiba. That's crazy. Get a Shiba Inu or whatever that shit is. Uh... <laughs> oh shit a ninja dog as a shinobi use your lethal skills i'm not buying this i think i'm gonna get the 110 dollar edition uh this is the ultimate okay for all the dogs what does it come with oh here we go ultimate edition all right so this is what you get in the 130 dollar edition you get the shiba you get the shiba dog three days early access the two expansions some skins, a red skin, ooh. Some random items, five skill points. Get the fuck out of here, bro. I'm not buying this shit. Nigga, no. So you get nothing. You get an extra red skin and five bonus skill points. You get the cheat. Play the game, bro. Play the goddamn game. I'm not buying this. I'll get the $110 edition. That To me, that's value. Yeah. Oh, shit, five skill points? Do you know how easy at the... <laughs> If you play any RPG, you know, skill points are not hard to get until at least like halfway through the game. In the beginning, you're going to get five skill points right off rip, bro. <laughs> yeah, I got a cop now. But to me, like the $110 edition, if you care about the story, at least you get the season pass with the extra content. And I'm not going to lie. If you played the last three Assassin's Creed games, their expansions are fucking big. It's a lot of content. So I'd imagine it's going to be the same if we're going off data. Um... Bro, TBH, I need my skill points. Y'all some cheetahs. I'm not I'm not paying. Y'all can have this. People can be mad at this $130 edition. Fuck that. You get Riley the dog from Call of Duty. Get the fuck out of here. Um, why do you need extra skill points in a single player game? Because niggas suck, bro. They don't want to play no fucking games. Um, and last but not least, <laughs> I think <laughs> shout out to Ubisoft. Y'all smart. I peep game. I feel like I didn't see nobody talk about this. Not specifically this article. But this move they made very smart from ubisoft so we got lost in the shuffle because the assassin's creed reveal was the big news of today ubisoft also broke some other news remember that free-to-play division spinoff game heartland well it's been canceled and they announced it today but it got buried because assassin's creed they know what they was doing they knew what they was doing um ubisoft has canceled its upcoming free-to-play shooter the division heartland as it moves to refocus its resources on bigger opportunities. I've been saying, man, they, these companies have been complaining about how expensive games are to make now. If it ain't working, shut it down. Stop wasting money. Nobody, nobody wanted to play this game. Nobody wanted to play this game. The Division Heartland was announced on PC and console back in 2021. It was supposed to launch 2021, 2022. Since then, it resurfaced intermediately in an open beta last summer. Nobody liked it. However, three years after Heartland's unveiling, Ubisoft has now officially called time on the still unreleased project. After careful consideration, we've made the tough call to halt development. Effective immediately. Like, they were working on this, uh, um, the Division Mobile, and then you know there, there's probably going to be a Division 3. It's too much content. The Division Mobile's cool. I'm pretty sure they'll find a marketplace for that. Just go work on Division 3 or make a new game. Nobody wants to play this shit. Where's Beyond Good and Evil 2? That game ain't never coming out, nigga. They announced that shit back in 2014, I believe. It's 2024. It's been 10 years. That shit ain't coming out. 
uh, uh, and, and until we see a gameplay trailer, seeing is believing. So if you had your hopes up to play this shit, it's in development. Yeah, so they should have been canceled this shit. It's too much Division content. I don't think the Division is popular enough to have three separate titles. You're just cannibalizing yourself. Uh, and I got a few more articles. Did you cover the first look at The Last of Us Season 2? I don't care about them pitches or whatever that shit is. Uh, I still can't believe that Spider-Man multiplayer game that leaked got canceled. I can. Uh... If you look at the, the if you look at the leak for all the games that um what's the name is working on Insomniac they have a big they have a big spreadsheet of games coming up for the next ten years it was it would have probably been too much to maintain that live service game and then also keep in mind they have to make Spider Man three so they were talking about making a live service Spider Man game um with a bunch of different Spider Men. It would have been probably kind of hard to try to figure out how to make each Spider-Man play differently while all trying to also make Spider-Man 3 unique. Because one of the biggest complaints about Spider-Man 2 was it wasn't, it was a very safe sequel that wasn't unique enough. So I think they're going to save all their ideas that they have left and go for the gusto with Spider-Man 3. Because uh, once, it's not just enough to just put the game out, a live service, you have to update it. I, I think it was good they canceled it in the long run. The trailer looked good. I get it. It looked good for where it was at. But from a business standpoint and a creative standpoint, I think it was smart for them to cancel it. I don't think there's enough you can do creatively with Spider-Man to have a live service game running at the same time as developing Spider-Man 3. Because I they, then they would just open themselves up for when Spider-Man 3 comes out. Oh, this shit is too safe. It's boring. 